Hey everyone, this is Steve Weintraub with Collider. I am thrilled to be back at our studio at the Cinema Center at Marble, uh, which David, I'm sure, is upset that I've butchered the name five times, but I'm, I'm joking around. Uh, listen, I, I really want to say a strong congratulations to you guys for Kill. Uh, thank you. Thank I, you so much. Uh, I thought you guys did such a great job with this. I had a blast watching, but I'm also sick and twisted. So I'm just going to say, but um, so uh, everyone watching won't have seen the movie yet. And I hate asking this, but how have you been describing the fr- the film to like friends and family don't watch watch it if you have balls <laughs> i don't know if i'll speak in hindi is it okay if i speak in hindi like for just for the tagline sure 100 percent himmat at the hall pe ao hall me ao if you have guts come to the halls <laughs> if you have <laughs> balls come to the halls yeah <laughs> If that you have come to the halls, yeah. 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 Um, loose, well, the, the thing good. about this though is, I've seen a decent amount of Indian cinema. Yeah. Not, I, not a ton, but I have seen Indian cinema, and I've never seen a film like this out of India. So I am curious: was it tough for you to make to get this made because it's really bloody, it's very violent, and it's not something that typically comes out of India? Uh, so to tell you the truth, uh, actually, it was not that difficult to make it because when I uh, met Gunit and Karan, they jumped at the opportunity of making such a film, and I'm really, really thankful to them because this kind of a genre is not made in India at all. This is the first extreme action film coming out of India, and uh, you know, so uh, when I went and told them about the story, uh, they just wanted to make it. They said it's high time. It's high time we've not tried this, and uh, that's how that's how quickly it got processed. I'm curious for the two of you though. This is uh, again. Let's stress the word violent. This is pretty violent, and I'm curious for both of you. What were there any people in your life, managers, agents? I'm not exactly sure how it is. Um, on that, you know. Uh, 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 telling you this is too violent you should not do this or were they encouraging you saying this is going to be really cool no, mama, they were like i i i like it do this they they had that sadistic pleasure <laughs> to you know from that so they said go for it and just do it yeah i mean as a child while growing up i've only watched action movies you know all kind of action films and i wanted wanted to be a part of such a project and when it came my way i was all up for it i was like there's no chance i'm letting this go no matter what people going to say and i think it it came to me uh, through my producer only like the guy i was doing a film with darma production i was doing a film with them already so it came through them so i trusted him and he's also my mentor so of course it uh, the opportunity that i got and the narration that i got from him was so good it was amazing it was something that while narrating the entire film came to life and i could only imagine myself doing it and that's the only question i asked him that when are we starting this when are we when are we like can we just when start going into the and and then my second question was that am i a part of this am i already selected please tell me i am and he was like we'll see to that <laughs> yeah that's what he said he said we'll see to that so i'll let uh, you know i i'm so curious in terms of th- this movie has a ton of action and i'm i'm curious how long did you actually have to film the movie like how many days so in all we shot for 77 days uh out of which around uh, 66 days was we shooting the train sequence and action part we shot around 58 days or 57 yeah. days yeah yeah <laughs> right i i'm so barring the rehearsals and the workshops yeah. of action so we we did a lot of rehearsals yeah. sure, we, did, sure. Uh, yeah. we almost prepped for around 9 months there it is i wanted to that's what i'm looking for like how long yeah yeah we prepped for 9 months so for almost 3 months these guys were training and uh, so we got an action director from uh, korea mr o young and he's he's uh, he's been a part of snowpiercer so he came on board and he got his team and there was a uh, we had another action director from india mr parvez khan so uh, both of them they trained these guys for 3 months and not just these guys the other uh, goons who are the, uh, who are who are playing in the film so there are around some 45 goons so they trained them as well because we had to cast them we couldn't use the stuntmen to do that because they had to emote in the film so we we cast them and then we trained with them these guys trained with them for almost 3 months uh, this used to happen i have so many follow ups so many questions so uh one of the things that the beginning of the film is very colorful and bright and it's not what i expected and then it 
talk a little bit about how you set up this world and how maybe it's a little different than people might expect. So um, um, our director of photography, uh, Mr. Rafi Mahmood, uh, he, he came up with the idea that because, you know, um, the film starts becoming grimmer and grimmer and grimmer. So when we open up, we should not even give a hint to the audience what it is going to come after after 10 minutes what are you going to see so um, so that's the reason why it starts off with almost like it probably is going to be a love story and we wanted to trick the audience over there to be very honest till the time we introduce raghav in the film and suddenly you see this guy who's at the working at the gas gas station and he turns and from there onwards uh, the, the the lighting as well as the colors start changing to a point in the middle of the film after which when the shit uh, hits the roof it just starts going dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and darker and yeah. darker and also so uh, th we we took a we took um, creative liberty because that's not how the trains are lit in, in india uh, so slowly we started changing the colors and you don't even notice that how how gradually the colors have, have started changing Unless film. you're a big film fan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know. Yeah. Just th throwing that out there. For <laughs> for both of you, um, this this had to have been a very daunting and challenging shoot because of the physicality and how much you had to do in a in, in a very limited space. So talk a little bit about the challenges as an actor to deliver a performance while doing action. And you you know, you are in a very tight quarters for the whole time. Pretty much the whole time. The whole time for me, <clears throat> I think uh, I have uh, long limbs, <laughs> so it, it. I was really <clears throat> sometimes you know we used to take uh, uh, two, two, three, three shots just because I used to hit my hand in some of the bogey, and then I had had to like. Uh, so, but yeah, it was challenging, but it was really fun, and you know all the, uh, during our shoot, all the time we were like only like this, because Indian trains move a lot, you know. Sure. You've been there. Yeah, so whenever I used to go home, back home, and sleep, I'm all, almost like this. So 77 days, nine months, I was like this the whole time. And it was the, the train all the time. And you were so much into that space and, you know, that, that character and that body language. I had to, like, I, I, I worked on that uh, during the prep. So, it yeah, it was challenging, but it was really fun-loving, man. And it was... It's a dream, actor's dream to perform uh, to play that character. We could do this all over again. Yeah, I, I, in I a could, cruise. Yeah, that was that was my quote, which everybody's stealing now. <laughs> yeah. I would do it all over again. So yeah, uh, considering the fact that it was uh, physically exhausting. Not only that, but for me, it was mentally more exhausting, to be very honest with you, because uh, of course we shot it for uh, like seventy-seven days consecutively, but the the film happens in a span of two hours. So right, so the maintaining the emotional continuity of the character was everything for me because he's always there's something or the other is always happening with him. Like he gets into a fight, then he's taking some time to like to, just to ca catch a breath, and then his uh, uh, something or the other keeps happening to him. Like you know, he's <laughs> he's always trying to catch a breath, and then uh, when that thing happens, <laughs> the, the the big uh, twist that happens in the film, the pre-interval sequence that happens, maintaining what happened to him, the personal loss. Throughout the film was the biggest challenge for me because that has to be evident on his face throughout till the very end. So uh, I think they were, they were nice lives. I spoke to Sir also like they were. I, I was getting dreams like you know I was in in my dreams. I'm thinking of the sequence that I had shot a day prior. The action sequence was running in my mind throughout, and I'm getting up. I slept for six seven hours, and but I'm feeling that probably I didn't sleep at all because my mind was constantly thinking about the scene. I was in that loop. So it was mentally uh, more exhausting for me uh, than physically because physically it was not so much. Uh, I think I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, the other thing is that I'm sure for both of you, you're also thinking about what are my moves tomorrow? What do I need to remember? What are we doing tomorrow? And like, you know, like it's a marathon from yeah. I've, I've never acted, but every actor tells me it's like it's a marathon, especially an action film. I used to look forward to it, to be honest. It's not like that I was thinking, I was thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow, but it was more in a very positive light that, okay, tomorrow is, is, is the same thing that I'm going to do. It's the same set, it's the same set of people I'm going to see, it's the same sequence. I, I was looking forward to it more than being nervous about it. So that was my take on things while see, shooting uh, for it. Uh, generally, what happens when you're well prepped, for me, I'm talking about me, my personal experience, when you're well prepped, I tend to just forget 
before i go to the set if i'm well prepped i forget what i learned so that while doing in the moment the surprise and the element of surprise is there for me and i get discoveries and i can discover new things on the set in the train d- during my scenes or in the f- not in the fight fight we are co- we choreographed but during the scenes I, t- i i try to forget everything and just be there and i've uh, subconsciously whatever i've learned as a character or whatever it is i just go there and have i discover new new things and that's what i uh, uh, love about this job of mine <clears throat> so that's why I, i i prepped a lot nine months and then i took a week i think two weeks to just forget it and do different things and see if my body is still working like that and i used to come on the on set and just uh, discover and explore sure yeah but there's also a lot of muscle memory because you've yeah, you've that, prepped for so long subconsciously it, it has it's to karate come. kid i've seen cobra kai yeah. you know it's <laughs> like the wash on i'm, wash, yeah. I'm joking yeah. but you repetition, know repetition repetition yeah. repetition repetition and then One of the things that I enjoyed uh, about your character and the performance is that sometimes in America, in American cinema, the lead actor um, like can't get hurt. Uh, I don't want to say anything about Jason Statham, who I'm a huge fan of, but he can't lose a fight, you know. And what I appreciated is that you got the shit kicked yeah. out of you yeah. in this movie. So talk a little bit about what it's like playing someone who is, you know, getting their ass kicked in, and you are caked in blood. You got cuts. You know. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, for that I think the, all the credit goes to the director for writing such a scene and making him more human. I feel I totally relate because earlier if you would have seen there was one sequence where like of course as you rightly mentioned that he's somebody he's a human after all he's a commando he's not like he's god or he's some uh, uh some 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 superman or some batman who can't be defeated. So I think the the, the more human he is the more relatable he can be with you know common people because no matter how strong you are there will be somebody who's going to be stronger than you oh and that person's in the movie and that person is in the movie you so know. i think uh, that was some brilliant writing and some brilliant thought that the director brought in in the script and i mean that's that's all him that's all him i have a question so every time i speak to filmmakers directors i always talk about editing because it's the most important thing it's where it all comes together so talk a little bit about what you learned from friends and family screenings that ended up impacting the finished film um So my editor Shiv, his name is Shiv. Uh, he's a brilliant editor. He's a, you know, it's it's actually. Um, uh, so, what? So the process is that once I've finished the shoot, I will not enter the edit room till the time the first edit is done. Sure. Because uh, I feel the editor is a filmmaker on his own. Yeah. So I want him to have his take, have a go. on the film from his side and uh, see what he can bring in and uh, to be honest there was a huge change which he brought in uh, so earlier we were entering the film uh, entering the train pretty late he just threw things out and uh, we enter the film uh, we enter the train precisely in the 6th minute so that's that's what he has done and when we showed it to our friends and families and we were uh, uh, taking reactions from them uh, there, were, there were a lot of there were a lot of reactions coming in but uh, like what i was telling earlier this is the first genre film coming out of extreme action genre film coming out of india so uh, you know there are few people who understand this kind of a genre so we were told lots of times there were there were uh, there were um, um, you know suggestions that we should increase the love story we should mm. we should have the more love story so that it will feel more for the uh, for the, the for the boy story. for the girl uh, but we we actually stuck on the fact that no it's a genre film we need to uh, keep the genre its importance I can't imagine what was it like actually showing the film because again I don't know how much genre films go to India but what was it like showing it to people who maybe not seen genre films that much and watching something with this much blood and action for the first time Oh so uh, most of it uh, when the people who watched it they were shocked they were shocked and they were pleasantly shocked they were surprised and so you know we were thinking that maybe the uh, maybe the girls would not like it and it was it 
was a surprise they were they were screaming they were shrieking and they wanted to watch more and they wanted to watch more blood and like one of one of my uh, one of my friends said it's a it's a date film it's a date film i want to go uh, go to uh, watch this film with my boyfriend because i want to hold his hand and i i want him to protect me while while watching this this yeah, film so so you know this this is it's a it's a very different reaction i i was expecting yeah. a completely different reaction but when i uh, showed the film to her and uh, two more friends of hers they were oh my goodness they were they I were just ecstatic i would go with my girlfriend, yeah. go with my girlfriend to remember. watch this film because i'm really scared of these type type of films i'm scared i don't like i when i see i but i want to go with my girlfriend and we you know I, those typical I, i remember this very vivid uh, reaction that i got from a friend of mine who saw the film uh shona uh she said uh, there were times when i didn't want to watch the film but it was so tempting and so um, catchy that i was watching it with one eye closed and one eye open it's a guilty so pleasure the, it's a guilty pleasure for her so that's the kind of reaction that we got from the film that of course it's a, a little uncomfortable to watch the amount of blood that we have uh, shed in the film and it's all him you know the, this man he loves blood to another level there was a sequence i remember in the film you if you remember or not the fire extinguisher thing and the leftover of that yeah i was going to say we don't want to be specific but yes there is a fire extinguisher in the movie that is yeah. used to inflict things yeah so i mean yeah it's it's all him and uh, there was this moment when he came on the sets and he saw the blood he came like this looking at you know the blood like that and he touched the blood and he held it like that he like it doesn't seem thick enough make it make it thicker and i'm just looking at him i said oh god he's my director i mean he, there, there is uh, you know streak of uh, violence in him i should be very uh, careful of him now yeah. no, so so there is a, there is a reason to it actually uh, <laughs> sure. so it's a, it's a, there is a serious reason to it and uh, you know i feel blood is a symbol of ambition greed and sacrifice you know so in the film there is somebody's ambition and greed and then there is a sacrifice a lot of people are, sacri- are getting sacrificed because of that ambition and greed sure. so so as you as you near as you uh, go towards the end of the film you will see that the blood has increased the flow of blood has increased it's actually uh, it's actually a very conscious decision to keep increasing the blood till uh, till the end of the film you guys are part i'm switching subjects you guys are part of tiff midnight madness and uh I'm curious what does it mean for all three of you to be a part of this film festival and you know premiering here in a section of the of the festival that means a lot to a lot of people which is Midnight Madness. Oh it's it was overwhelming. I I just uh like even right now the the feeling is still sinking in. Um it's just a great honor to be here. This is the first time we've come here. Uh this is the first time um my film has has come to Toronto. I have come for the first time I'm in Canada and uh when we started making the film we had no idea that you know our world premiere is going to happen over here so and at midnight madness which is which is the place to be for a genre film so I'm very very happy very excited and uh couldn't have been better actually couldn't have been better couldn't have been better I'm I'm really overwhelmed I'm that's as sir said such a prestigious film festival and such a wonderful uh, segment midnight madness this is my first international film festival as an actor and I, people are not giving me time to, uh, to for me to you know for the feelings to sink in because sometimes there's interviews and all when i go back home to india i'll sit i'll meditate i put a candle on i'll just keep thinking about it that what happened with me i'm i'm really so uh, happy and proud of myself i think sir is also proud of me oh yes of yes. course i'm yes. i'm yes so yeah i i feel it's uh, it's too good to be true to be honest with you it's too good to be true when the news uh, when i got the news from gunit like my uh, my producer she uh, she broke the news to me saying that you know the film has made it to tiff i said uh, okay that was the only reaction i had because i thought it's too good yeah i mean it's impossible it's my debut film it's my first film it's it's massive and i just kept the phone down and i told a friend of mine yaar uh, meri film tiff mein ja rahi hai my film is going uh, for toronto film festival he said what are you are you serious you know how what that means i said i know what it means but i think probably i mean something will happen or the other everything uh, came through yesterday when i was watching the film the way people reacted oh god it was something 
yeah. that I've never felt in my life. I had somebody sitting on my left. I had somebody sitting on my right. There was a guy sitting right behind me. The reaction, the way they reacted, one more time, one more time, yeah. go for it, one more time. We want part two. We want part. So that reaction made it all so real for me, and all it was so overwhelming. As he said, I just wanted ten seconds to just cry, come back, and just sit. Sure, which I never crazy, got. Man. So crazy. I think I'm grateful. I'm immensely blessed. I'm immensely lucky to be to be here, to be sitting in front of you and you know doing this interview. I feel. Um, I feel it's a it's a feeling that I, I I probably will never feel again. I want to retain it. Mm. I want to feel it every minute of my life now. I feel. I, I was not able to believe that I, we are getting a standing ovation after the film. The when the film ended and and uh, the, most of them were f- foreigners. <laughs> they were not Indians Foreign. also. They don't know us well, but still they were standing for us and clapping. I was really. They loved very, the film. They didn't know yeah. us. Nobody knew us. Yeah. There. They just loved the film. Yeah. I, I. What's funny is I watched the film the day before the premiere, and I, as I was watching it and as it ended, I said, "Oh my God! I wish I could be in the theater to watch this with the Midnight Madness crowd because I could have told you that was going to happen, but it was just it's past my bedtime. I couldn't do it. It was crazy. Right. It was. You know what I mean. <laughs> It would have uh, woken you up from the sleep. So, so I really want uh, there's there needs to be a special mention uh, for the producers Akya and Dharma. Uh, like I was saying that this is the first of its kind coming from India, and the kind of conviction yeah. and support which they have provided uh, to the film it's immense. I'm I'm like truly grateful to them that you, you know when there is a these are not tested waters. This is a this is a first of its kind. Sure. And like your first question when you said that was it difficult? It was not difficult. It was they they were uh, they were fully sold on the fact that we need to come out with this. It's high time. And um, I'm really really grateful to uh, to to Karan to Apurva uh, Gunit and Achin that they actually made this happen. Really. They trusted. Her. Yeah, they trusted. The it's it's, yeah. it's to, to put in this kind of belief. Uh, in a film like this, when there is no precedent, it's 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 just uh, immense. I don't want to be specific with what happens in the movie, who lives, who dies, all that stuff. But I am curious if the reaction from this, plus your experience making the movie, do you have an appetite for making another genre film? Yes. <laughs> like I see yes. your face. You're like, I've I've I've, I've I've tasted the blood. <laughs> <laughs> And it tastes like candy. Yeah, oh, it tastes sweet. <laughs> yeah, the blood we, we we used was sweet. Right, but being serious, is it one of these things where you are already in your mind thinking about what am I going to do next? And are the producers so happy yes. that they're like, what can we do now? Yes. So we are already thinking about uh, a sequel. A sequel. Uh, so we want to make it a franchise, uh, f- uh, f- uh, franchise films. Yeah. So uh, very soon. We will be working we'll here next yeah, year too. Yeah, yeah. Part two. Part two. Yeah. But you, you honestly don't like. I mean, the, uh, everyone involved who ma- who financed the movie has to be incredibly happy. They're yeah. like, they know what they have. Yes. You know. Yes. yes. They seemed I, happy yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I am, we hope. I am curious though. Do genre films typically play well in India, or is it just a question of like, like the raid? Did that do well? Like, so John Wick four. Sure. Uh, it was playing for four weeks. And was going yeah. houseful, so you know um, the one, two, three, and four. All four have done phenomenally well in India, which is uh, which itself means that genre sure. films are, are working. Uh, I don't think Raid had uh, Raid released in India. Uh, it was oh, this is just like a mention of a genre. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I just mean like I just don't Sisu. know. Sisu, Sisu, oh, yeah, that yeah was, that Sisu, was Sisu, Sisu uh, uh, was running for three weeks. When it was not so, it was not promoted so much in India. Still, it was running for three weeks, which is just by word of mouth. People like to watch all of this. You know, there are also everybody is exposed they, they, to so much cinema now because of OTT and everything yeah, being accessible to, to everyone. So I feel it's accessible to everybody now. OTT, Netflix, Amazon. So people are watching everything. If you make a good film yeah. and you put it out there, I mean, people are going to watch it anyway. I, I, I have a theory uh, to that. You know, during COVID, uh, a lot of people were at home. And they got exposed to like a, a person who's sitting in the the remotest of town must have seen uh, films coming from Korea and yeah. Germany and France and Japan. Now they're very ex- they're, they're very much exposed to international cinema. It's a good point. Yeah. So 
you know, so the films which were made before COVID and when they were released after COVID, they didn't do that well because the audience had moved yeah. moved on. So yeah, that- yeah. So because they're more, they're, they're much more aware now and they're more adaptive. They are the audience is very intelligent. Yes, they're not fools. It's, it's definitely yes. a more yes. of a. Yes. Yes. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, and like, look at RRR in America and how yeah, well that yeah, did. Yes, but yes, yes. listen, I, I have to end with you, even though I could ask you a, a thousand other questions because I have another interview sure. and I'm sure you have other things you'd rather do than talk to me. So I will just say a sincere congratulations. I'm really happy for you guys. I know people are going to love it. Thank you for coming in. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.